In the first three problems in this exercise, we find the transients in a circuit of the operation of certain switches. So we assume that in problems one to three, assume that steady state conditions are reached before the operation of the switch S. Yes. So whether the switch S yes is opened or closed in the first three problems, we assume that before the operation of the switch, the conditions in the circuit have reached a steady state. So that will enable us to find out the conditions at t equal 0 minus in the various circuits that we are going to investigate. First problem. So in this problem, you are having a 12 volts DC source connected to a circuit consisting of a 4 ohm resistor, 2 Henry inductor, a 2 farad capacitor and shunt, another 2 ohm resistor, and a 1 ohm resistor. Now this switch S yes, is kept closed for a very, very long time till steady state is reached. And then it is opened at T equals 0. Now you are asked to find out the capacitor, rate of change of capacitor voltage, dVc dt, d squared Vc dt squared, the third derivative d cubed Vc dt cubed, not as a function of time, but all of them evaluated at t equal 0 plus. And how do you do this? Using Laplace transform method. So we are not interested in the, ratio, the time domain behavior of Vc or the derivatives. We are interested in the values of the first, second, and third derivatives of the Vc evaluated at t equal 0 plus. Now, if we have to do this in the classical differential equation approach in time domain, it becomes a little tricky and complicated. But the Laplace transform method gives us a very simple way in which we can calculate this. And this problem illustrates the technique. So all you have to do is, using the t equal 0 minus conditions of Vc, set up the transform diagram for this, and arrive at the expression for Vc of s, the Laplace transform of the capacitor voltage. Once you have the Laplace transform of the capacitor voltage, you can also find out the Laplace transform of the derivative of the capacitor voltage, the second derivative of the capacitor voltage, third derivative of the capacitor voltage, all in Laplace transform domain. But you don't have to find the inverse Laplace transform to evaluate Vc or Vc prime, Vc double prime, or Vc triple prime. Only once you have got the Laplace transforms of the respective quantities, you apply the initial value theorem and find out their values at t equals 0 plus. So this is an application of the initial value theorem. So as we said, the initial value theorem will always give you the t equals 0 plus values. So you have to do, apply the theorem and find out the respective values. You don't have to find the inverse Laplace transform of any one of these quantities. Second problem is this, in which we have a two-loop circuit consisting of an inductor and a capacitor and so on. The switch is kept closed for a very, very long time. That enables you to find out the initial conditions with respect to the capacitor as well as the inductor. And you use them in the transform diagram. With 4 volts, 1 ohm, 4 farads, 1 ohm, 4 henrys. And you are asked to find out, find Vc of t for t greater than or equal to 0. Use two methods. Once you have the transform diagram, you analyze the transform diagram on the loop basis using the loop current method or the node voltage method. And you get the solutions for Vc of t by both methods and compare. Both should be the same. When you are using the node voltage method, as I mentioned, when you replace this initial conditions on the capacitor by means of an equivalent source, it is the voltage across those two nodes which represents the capacitor voltage in the transform domain. So you keep that in mind in calculating the capacitor voltage using the node voltage method. So this is an exercise in using the transform diagram for the solution of one of the response quantities, which happens to be Vc of t in this particular example. So you can take this down. Now, the third example is concerns the use of the transform diagram approach where mutual inductance are present. So you have a three volt source connected to a series circuit of one ohm and the primary coil having a this inductance, self-inductance of 1 Henry. It is coupled to a secondary coil of 4 Henry self-inductance through a mutual inductance of 1 Henry. 
this is the mutual inductance, this is a self inductance of coil 1, this is a self inductance of coil 2 and the secondary circuit is close to a 2 volts DC cell, this is source at a 2 ohm resistance. So, this is the situation and uh, so when the switch is kept open, naturally only current will flow through this, there will be no current here. So, I 2 0 minus you can find out and put appropriate initial conditions in the transform diagram. And once the switch is closed, of course, this circuit is also completed. You have got a current here and a current there and you write down the appropriate loop equations and solve for I 2 of S. From that, find I 2 T for T greater than 0. So, you have to use the replacement of initial conditions in coupled coils by equivalent sources. You can have a, use either current sources or voltage sources and find out the appropriate solution. Problem number 4, we have a series circuit containing a resistance R of 1 ohm and a capacitor of 0.5 farads. And this is connected to a voltage source V s which has got a discontinuous character. It is a set of periodic pulses. and so on and so forth. This is the variation of V s. It has the pulses have a amplitude of 10 volts. This is T in seconds. So, it is a pulse frequency is 1 hertz and the pulse duration in each period is half a second 3 by 2, 2 and so on and so forth, 2 and half, etc. So, this is the VFS and assume that if this is the capacitor voltage, Vc0 minus is 0, that is the pulse is applied at t equals 0, first pulse at that time the capacitor voltage is 0. Now, you are asked to find out the current. So, you are asked to find out an expression for the current in the network on the application of the discontinuous voltage source. This is a periodic voltage source starting from T equals 0. So, you must find out the Laplace transform of that, use that, and get an expression for IFS and you interpret the IFS you will have e to the power of s factors also in that. When you find out the inverse Laplace transform, you get some delayed versions of certain quantities. You interpret them suitably and for get an, give an expression for IFT in the final expression, in the final result. Fifth problem involves the application of some of the system concepts that we have been talking about. So, let me write this down. The response of an initially relaxed linear time invariant, that means constant parameters system to a unit impulse delta t that is applied at t equals 0 is 4 e to the power of minus t u t. That means this impulse response of the system is given and you are asked to find a series of quantities, find the response of the same system find the response of the same system that is once again assuming it to be initially relaxed to a unit step using time domain analysis.
That is, you try to find out the convolution of the step and the impulse response. B, find the response to e to the power of minus t ut in time domain that is don't use laplace transform find the response to this in time domain using impulse response as a reference so you use the convolution integral using h of t then c find the solution in B using the step response. So in time domain, once again, you use the convolution integral involving this initial response A of t. D, find the system function HFS. E, using the system function HFS, find the responses in A and B. That is, use the Laplace transform at this time. Earlier, you were using the convolution integrals. Now, using HFS, find the response in A and B and compare, of course. Compare with the earlier results. F, find the response of the system to an input sin 2t ut. T. So if the input is a sinusoid applied at t equal 0, find the response of the system to this input. Of course, you can use Laplace transform method for this. Quite convenient to use. G, find the steady state response. to this input sine 2t without using the result in f. So you are asked to find out the forced response of the system sine 2t. The forced response is with an input sine 2t also happens to be a steady state response because it's a steady, the sinusoid is a steady state has a steady state characteristic. It doesn't diminish with time. The amplitude is maintained. Therefore, the forced response to sine 2t is also the steady state response. And that portion of the total response that you obtained in f, you obtain independently using the frequency response function and compare with the result in f. That means whatever in the total response, the particular portion corresponding to the steady state behavior must agree with this. Compare with the result in F. Then lastly, H, find the input xt which is 
when applied to a system yields a response sin 2 t u t. So, what you want is you determine what type of excitation should be given to the system, so that the output is sin 2 t u t. That means, it must start from 0 like this. So, that is the output. So, what type of input should be obtained in order to find out get this output. So, this last problem illustrates the ideas of system, use of Laplace transform to the system analysis that we have discussed in the last two lectures. It is a quite a comprehensive package of questions that you are having. It covers more or less all the aspects that we have discussed.